Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to learn from my failures and successes in the most recent Apex Quads tournament from this past Saturday. It's going to be a long video so get comfortable and ready to learn. I will break down the biggest moments and the goal is from all my stupidity you'll have an accelerated learning process. Let's be upfront about two things here though. I get these questions asked a lot. Number one, why I never get mad when I play? And probably more shockingly, even when there's money and probably notoriety on the line. Well, it's because I know the position I'm in, my current skill level, but most importantly, I know how to fix these things. And that is 100% why I'm making this video. This is what I want all of you to learn. I believe wholeheartedly that you can learn from these videos. And I want to do my best so you can have self-improvement in anything you do. Now, what hurts the ego the most is that frustration and also being unaware of how to fix things. When you're not sure how to fix something, that can be the most hurtful thing to your progression. I understand that. But understand another factor. You may not have as much time or are working on that skill set which needs more time investment, or it could be an outside variable out of your control. So control what you can. With knowing what to fix, it's not a matter of if, it's only when, which is why I personally never give up. Even if people think I suck, at least I know in time what to fix. Here's an example of somebody who I admire in the acting scene, Keanu Reeves. People may judge him for his acting skill, but he is the first one to arrive and the last one to leave on set. He cares about all of those around him, making working environments just the best for everybody. But his dedication to his craft is literally unmatched when it makes him an amazing role model and inspiration. Now you, yes, you watching this video are probably even more talented than me at Apex Legends. But in the end, who will stay in it longer and work harder? If you and I can share this mentality, I promise you, you're going to be unbeatable. So have that mindset when we're watching and learning from today's review. Now remember, time investment is difficult, ladies and gentlemen, because we all have other obligations and it can't all just be gaming. So be logical and honest with yourself and fair, but also think critically. Number two, anxiety. Here's another thing. I continue to be transparent. I'm going to be flat out here. I 100% threw up before this tournament. <laughs> when I told Timmy I was stepping away, I literally, I vomited, all right? I, because I care. And when I got sick, all my jitters went away and I was locked in. I was fearless, but I was incredibly worked up. And to be honest, it had been some time since I competed. Even if it was just more of a fun tournament, there was a lot of money on the line and I did not want to disappoint my teammates. It felt like it did when I was performing on stage. It literally has followed me my whole life. I've maybe mentioned it a few times on the channel, and if this is your first time, well, now you know. And well, it just, just happened. Being passionate is okay. And perhaps one day, maybe I just need therapy for this, I don't know, but I never let my fear of getting sick ever stop me from experiencing life. So I pushed through it, and if I can do it, I promise you, yes you, again, let's reiterate, you can do it also. So now we tackled some of the mental prep, pre-game jitters, let's just dive into some gameplay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go into game one. My teammates for game one were It's Timmy, Midwolves, and Johnny Price. All the teammates I'm gonna have listed in the description down below and which two rounds they were a part of. The teams, by the way, every new map are randomized. So we got new teammates. So it was a little difficult. We weren't able to always settle, but that also was kind of the fun and really kind of pushed our limits. Now, other things to be mindful of during this round, unfortunately, Johnny Price did have lag issues and you're going to see that problem come up later, but we didn't let that team morale drop. And now another thing you're not going to hear in this video are the comms. Now, if you want to hear the comms, I have a link down in the description to the full VOD. I hear your feedback. I tried putting the comms in before and maybe it just requires better, better editing, but the feedback overall was it was too confusing to hear both at the same time. Now, I'm going to be talking a lot, which is why I'm choosing not to have the comms on screen. Now, the match is about to start, and I'm going to skip ahead to the biggest moment. But you can see in the lobby, there's a mix of a lot of fantastic pro players and a lot of creators and just high-ranking Pred players as well, Predator-ranked players. So the lobby overall was quite balanced, and I think the teams overall were, were pretty strong. I think the, a lot of feedback was that it was was balanced. Now, shout out to Timmy. If you go listen to the VOD as well, I'm going to give a massive shout out to him for the fact, one, he took the reins, especially whenever I had to go have my unfortunate circumstance occur, which you already heard at the start of the video. And then 
two, he really planned out what comp we wanted to do. Now, I know some of you guys will say, why didn't you play Watson? Remember, it's important as a team that you go in all on an idea together, which is why you're going to see me select here Lifeline. Now, Lifeline has a lot of power in quads. Specifically, the power that she brings is the focus. If she doesn't go down, then you able to revive your teammates and then kind of reset the fight. You'll notice when you play quads, the resetting is really, really big. Timmy is a fantastic pathfinder. Bangalore is great for being able to push. And Seer was supposed to give this. We're actually a full mouse and keyboard team, which is actually pretty rare as well. Now, another important thing to really highlight here as well is that just because you feel like you're comfortable in another legend, if you talk through it with your team, just make sure you're flexible. Flexibility is key and being a strong teammate and working through things, okay? then I promise you, uh, hopefully, Temi will even comment and say that, hey, yeah, Daz was a good teammate because he's flexible. Uh, if he doesn't, then I'll always try to be better next time. So again, shout out to you, Timmy, for just being just awesome, dude. I remember seeing your channel whenever you first started. You've always remained the same awesome and true person as always. Uh, and if, if you guys don't know who his Timmy is, uh, you're probably living on a rock. Either way, we planned out our rotation. You'll notice that the, the path in which we land, even for the first and second game, are always the same. Now, I'm looking for a close range and a long range weapon just because I know I'm going to be doing range pressure, especially because I know the lobby is going to be slower. Now, the lobbies are slow because we make the assumption, the safe assumption that everyone's going to want to play safe because money is on the line. That's always the assumption you make when there's a lot of money on the line. So that's why I choose to go with a scout for strong poke damage and then I just to make sure I have good ammo economy and then also a close range so that I'm able to actually push at the end of the day. And also make sure what you pay attention to what your teammates are running because you don't want to stack, which is why I saw all the energy ammo here. But I know my teammates are also running a lot of energy guns as well. Now, being efficient with your loot pattern is very key. In a second, there was another thing I could have done uh, a bit better here was making sure I communicate when I was opening the hole because technically if somebody's on the other side, Timmy reminded me of this, then you can get the extra experience. Another mistake I made later was making sure to select your perk whenever you upgrade it. Uh, I did fat finger the button there and then you'll see the mistake here. Timmy made this call out. I agree. I should have uh, calmed it. I think I did, but then I needed to just be aware that that was a thing. I, I did remember at one point, but hey, you know, we live and learn. We do it for the next one. At this point, our loot pattern is pretty much done. Timmy and I are ready to go rotate, which is why we pretty much start to pick up our things and, and move and get going. Even though our teammates are a little further behind, we need to take a look at the zone and make sure that we're ready. We have center zone, so it doesn't necessarily mean we have to fight. We just need to go find a really good spot to pretty much uh, blast from and make sure we have the resources for it. Let me take a look at the map here. Probably in a second, you'll notice where the map is pulling. It's pulling towards more of the southern end. And we just have to, yeah, it's, uh, kind of. The, we know later that it's pulling more towards the southern end. And you'll notice that's when people get stuck. I know somebody commented that this type of style can be very, quote unquote, boring to watch. But there's a lot that you can learn as you go from pubs ranked and then you start to play competitive. When you play competitive, you're kind of assuming everyone is of equal skill level. And you, and when money's on the line, you tend to play safer because you're unsure of what the potential outcome. You don't necessarily want to say, let's just take this fight and then hope, hope for the best. And also with King's Canyon, another major problem with this map is you tend to run into the issue where you're constantly battling for choke points and you always just want, quote unquote, a God spot. God spot is where you are pretty much postured up in a strategic spot of good height and able to look at multiple angles and not get pushed from. And also whenever the zone pulls, it's an ideal position to be in. So that's pr pretty much what we're looking for whenever you play with Casey. You'll notice in the second round, that's the bigger strength that we actually have. But keeping up with the team is really, really important. And even as if, let's say I'm a, I'm a lifeline or Watson, that's pretty much why I'm sticking right on to Timmy because he is my way to get in and out. So be mindful of your role and your roles do change depending on the legends that you're on, which is why we kind of have me pair with Timmy and then mid wolves paired with Johnny because for Johnny, the way he's going to get out is going to have that smoke. And this is, a, a, like I had said, uh, there's no knock against uh, Johnny. He does have a lot of lag. So if somebody comments down below, why does it seem like he's not able to do as much? He even tweeted it out. It just was an unfortunate circumstance, but we did the best we could with it. And you'll you'll notice it later in the second round whenever it does happen. But you, there's no reason to get mad about it. There are just unfortunate circumstances that do happen. And then you know what you can't control. It goes to the other variable at the start. 
focus on what you can control rather than what you cannot, which is why, you know, I could have definitely played a bit better or done certain things. So we decided to posture up here. So holding this side of the map does give us a lot of spots, but the downside is being able to work our way in. I wonder, and this is, keep in mind, this is all hindsight 2020, okay? There's a lot of things that could have happened. We could have held a closer spot because we don't have what we call a controller or anchor legend, right? And I don't think this was a bad thing as long as we work our way in. You never really know how it's going to work, whether you play edge holding or more center. Because we could have been more center and then we also could have been a lot more disrespected by opponents as well. So this isn't necessarily a bad spot, especially if it pulled more towards our side. Unfortunately, it pulled on the other side. But we do control a lot of space here. And this is where poke damage is very, very important to leveling up your armor and maintaining po pretty much strong positioning. Now, when you look at the multiple avenues, the best tips and advice I can give is always making sure you think critically and say, how many different ways could this have gone? How could I have used resources? How could I peek from a different area? What are my resources looking like? Did I have a grenade that I could have used? Did I have utility that I could have used? Could I have pressure to team off from a different angle? And all those questions arise with every single thing you do. And the best thing, my advice to give to anybody is just, it's better to make a bold mistake rather than hesitating and not making a mistake at all. So you'll notice that whenever I'm, I go bold with a mistake, it's a bigger one. So then we're pretty much having this conversation because sometimes my decision-making, I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's pretty stupid, okay? And I know in my head, I know what's right, but sometimes you kind of go for the stupid play regardless. Because right now we're trying to maintain pressure just to level up. See, here's, here's the thing that, that happened that was stupid. I forgot to upgrade my perk. There you go. I still did it, uh, but I forgot to upgrade the perk and we would have gotten at least red. I don't think that would have helped us necessarily 100% survive what occurred, but remember every little bit helps. Now, once we have our stuff leveled, there's not really a reason to necessarily poke and hold. Later, I did have the recommendation for Watson that I didn't think made a big difference, but it's really hard to judge early on whenever you have somebody who is lagging so this is this doesn't knock anything that that timmy had said and i i do believe in his leadership that's why we 100 percent go when you're in game you always go what your igl says whether you think it's right or wrong okay i think the best analysis is post mass analysis where you can discuss it but there is no reason to ever debate or argue when you're mid game on what should or could have happened it's only okay once you're in the lobby and you say okay we got a moment let's discuss what we can fix and what we can change and how do we do it and what do you think that's a great moment you, it's almost like you're in the locker room and you can discuss what happens and how to adjust from there so maintaining pressure and presence at all angles is very important. You'll notice one thing that I do is I'll find a as much of my body is covered. You'll see right here as humanly possible to main pressure. And I think one of them actually go down. There's a lot of damage there. Unfortunately, you know, he was lagging, so he went down. And so we weren't able to make a push off that. But there was a good amount of damage that went out. And I think one of them actually did get knocked from a distance and which is why they never peak again. You'll notice that resources are so instrumental and you'll notice how tight they get later whenever you're just like scrounging. Okay, I only have two cells. I only have one battery. It makes it really hard to peak when resources get cut down so low. You may be asking the question as well, why not just make the push? Well, when you make the push, you're more likely to get third partied. And this is also what happens when pros complain about the quality of a lobby. Because realistically, once the, the dog pile does start to happen, that's when everything goes downhill. Okay, that's when the scrim quality, all it takes is a few teams to start just to push things and just kind of start full sending for everyone to start full sending. Because if we push this, then another team will start to third party and they'll, they'll realize the opportunity is there and then it just spirals. Okay, it's just a natural progression of things that start to spiral, which is right, right now we only see still we have 14 squads remaining. We see a res that goes out and why nobody pushes it. That's the reason why, because you don't necessarily, especially when money's on the line, just want to go in and say, let's see if we can make this happen, especially when equal damage is being traded out. Let's say we damaged him for, I don't know, we see right there, but I think it was probably like 60 and maybe we get hit for 90. It becomes less worth. Okay, well, we're down on resources. Can we even make this happen? But if, a, if somebody does make a blatant mistake, let's say somebody got hit there for a larger amount, then that gives us the ability to make a play. And keep in mind, your damage is not necessarily a reflection of how well you're also playing. I could have 3,000 damage, but if we weren't able to go off of anything, was it because I didn't call something? Was it because 
my teammates didn't call something. There's always a, a give and take across the board from what I have learned. Uh, I'm sure any pro can can argue and de debate this, but I'm pretty confident what I'm sharing with you guys. That's why I'm going through it. Because I, I look at the VOD and I say, okay, I can see exactly what kind of went wrong. So our rotation here as we go in, when we take height, I do remember giving the information that it was going to be, I mean, we Timmy knows as well, it's going to be a tough rotation. When we see the rotation, we know we're going to get poke from, but there is really not many places we can go. Perhaps we give up height and play low ground, but then if you play low ground, what does that mean? Now, because we were down one player, that means we have one less person to pretty much maintain pressure and put pressure, and also our resources are low. And just because it, anybody is liable to make a mistake, I know Midwolves is a pred player, and you'll see me make an honest mistake later. When you're looking for an opponent to make a mistake, even when we're taking pop shots at the team across the way, all it took was for somebody to peek a little too long or make a mistake to the point where, boom, it's over. And that's kind of it. And that's really what makes a difference between a pro team versus a, I guess you could say, a team that is of a lesser caliber is that one team is more likely to make mistakes than the other. And that's pretty much what you're, what you're looking for and waiting for. I think what I'm going to do, I was at first thinking... I would commentate and cut these up, but I think I'll just pretty much chat as many tips as humanly possible. It's gonna make the video longer, but I am kind of enjoying as much as we're having the conversation back and forth, kind of talking about this. So when you look at zone, this is another big tip. A lot of people ask, what do you, can you do for rotation? There's a few things we can do here. Because we were stagnant, we didn't make a play off of anything. It made us, we, we do know that we, we had planned here, by the way, to rotate late. That is one. Two, by rotating in, we either have to push something or we're going to have to hold and wait for an opportunity to present itself. Now, unfortunately, an opportunity did not present itself and we pretty much got lasered by most of the lobby. Because one person is lagging, it makes it really hard to essentially make that play that we're looking for. It's So it's not we're not put in the most ideal scenario, essentially. So you're going to see this rotation. It's a, it's a little difficult, but you know, we're going to pretty much do the best we can. We go up and then you'll see pretty much the, the mayhem happen. I think what I'll do as well is once we're eliminated, I will end it there just so that it keeps the video at a healthy length where I'm reviewing my mistakes rather than commentating on what other teams could do. Cause I only have the comms of my own stuff. So I'm going to stick to my successes and failures as a big, big focus and what I know based on what my teammates did. So Wolves is trying to maintain space here, but unfortunately is getting blasted from multiple angles. Now I see the vision. This is just an unfortunate circumstance that happens because there's so many teams that were postured up and it's just an honest mistake that does happen. But the idea is that we either maintain pressure on the on the bottom team, we maintain pressure on the, the team that's across the way. I do calm that I'm going for the res. Even if I stayed up there and left Wolves to pretty much be for himself, I could have, in hindsight 2020, just kept tap resing and just staying in that corner rather than running back. Timmy was able to get me a Phoenix kit, or if I just dropped down. But of course, we were getting pushed by multiple teams, and then that pretty much, that's a wrap for us here. That's where it pretty much ends. And... Again, hindsight 2020, it's a little difficult. Maybe we should have just went for something and use a C-roll because we know that they're lagging. And Timmy made a fantastic play here, by the way, and you should check it out on the full stream where we did make money because his he was able to play patient and then kind of feed the zone and get, I believe, sixth place, which earned our whole team uh, $400. So regardless of this event, I mean, I was definitely on the lower end in terms of earnings, 100%, pretty much almost at the bottom, but I still earned money. Uh, and there's some people that didn't earn money and there's some people that earn a lot of money and because teams are randomized it's a little difficult so you put like you could see there's not you never can point the finger in one area right i could have been a little bit more stern in my regards as well and making a push towards something or maybe holding center but at the end of the day we still got sixth place because of timmy so big shout out to timmy for his play here check it out in the full stream again i'll have that link down in the description and then we're going to go into game number two and we're going to talk through a whole lot remember there's a lot of talking to about that throughout this i apologize if you don't like a lot of talking it's kind of what we do here on the channel and i yeah i'm sorry about that and hopefully you enjoy the uh the commentary and the post analysis and what we could have done and learned 
but I'm going to look at this and just, you see how even playing patient, this is what could have gone in our favor if the other teams also started pushing to where we were able to have a little bit more space. So it's one of those things you never really know as long as you're able to maintain pressure and damage. There's never necessarily a right or wrong all the time, okay? Just as a matter as, as if you're playing together as a team and trying to make the best possible circumstance. So we're going to do now, skip ahead to game number two. All right, game number two, ladies and gentlemen. So we have here that we did change. I went on to Watson to help with our shield economy, especially when we're holding in center of zone. And then we also have run Newcastle. The reason why is we're hoping that we can have more, let's say the wall, if we're caught out in the open, if we had Newcastle wall there to give us more space because Seer just wasn't doing as much for us for our comp. Keep in mind, Quaz is very new for a lot of us and our takeaways in terms of comp gives us a lot of versatility uh, across the board. Now, Timmy and I land on Cage again together with our similar loot pattern, and Johnny and Midwolves also land in their similar sp spot. You'll notice that it's the same exact pathing, which we, when you want to be efficient, you need to get the guns that you're comfortable with, and you just need to go. If you're not comfortable with the gun, ladies and gentlemen, then you need to go practice in the range with every single loadout and be confident. You'll notice that we also started dropping solo because we know our exact spot in which we're going, and we're trying to min-max our time there. There's a few things that I can always improve upon when I'm moving here. I honestly was like, where do I climb up to get the console? I could have shaved a few seconds down there. Uh, Timmy and I were better coordinated here by making sure we breached the hole together. So across the board, I think our, our loot pattern and everything is pretty top notch for us just running together for the very first time, which is very important. You'll notice that happens in game two and three, and I want to say five and six. Yeah, I mean, it's always the same, very much the same pattern and being as efficient as possible. When you're playing with other players that understand that, then you're going to be a lot faster across the board moving to the things that you need. So I'm running a pretty similar setup because I realized it did a lot of damage with it before. I look back just to make sure I'm looking for the console. So that was my mistake here. I could have saved myself a few seconds and I know it's nitpicking, but every single second matters and how you position where you move and where you go. So if I save myself five more seconds, maybe I could have been a little faster in regards and given more information who really knows, but you always want to have that open time a little bit just to give yourself time to breathe. That's also very, very important. So I'm running G7 Scout and Prowler. I stick with this all the way through. Got my close range, got my long range, and pretty much ready to rock. I do ping and, you know, let people know what's on the ground just in case they need it. And at this point, I calm to Timmy and say, I'm ready to go whenever you are. Grab a few extra things, and then we go right for the hold. We count it down. We say three, two, one, go. He does. And there you go. We go inside, but you see how we get both 150, 150? Extra experience goes extremely far in terms of making sure that we're keeping our armors leveled up as much as possible. We do have the zone information. We know it's a little bit far. And you'll notice that I'm also trying to ping where ideal positioning would be and where we could hold and what that could look like. Making suggestions isn't a bad thing. And like Timmy had said, just communicate, talk, give as much as humanly possible and that's gonna be ideal. So I calmed one spot. We do know in that general vicinity, that is what we want. And because Timmy said, you know, we'll say yes or no, but keeping open comms, you're just being confident on a play. It's just going to be 100% ideal with everything that you do. So we go for the resources while we're still a little bit early based on what we see on the mini map. We see that every team is still alive. Everyone's still moving around. We know where zone is. We know we can work our way in, but we need also resources to make sure that we're making it efficient. So the comms back and forth can be very direct, very clean. And Timmy asked me to grab that. I do. I'm pretty much as close to behind him as much as humanly possible. I drop off here. I get the ultimate. I do know, keep in mind, this could have actually gone south because there was a team nearby. It was a little bit greedy for me just to grab my ult when I could have already been running a little bit further ahead just to scout. So this is another hindsight 2020 when you think of things that you could have done. Do I need this? No. By the time I rotate, I probably have my ultimate. There is a capacitor team nearby, but if that team happened to already be rotating faster while I'm hitting that, they could have three, two, one me. So there's always those things that you need to be thinking about whenever you take an action. Now I committed to it. And if I die, then I know what the mistake was. Right. And the same thing actually could have happened with Timmy being over there because he was pretty close. But, you know, you commit to it, you know what the game plan is. And if you get eliminated, it's not really any mean means to really get upset because you know what your intention is. So across the board, when you're watching this video is what your intention is and make sure that you go all in on it. You don't really see much hesitation a lot in the gameplay here. Now we're discussing plans. We posture up because I hear somebody's flying. And we hear counter communication going on. So we start to watch. 
giving information of where they're at, and then we leave. Very, very quickly, right? We go. Now, I didn't take shots right away because, you know, we got to make sure we're all on the same page and we're scouting for information and say, okay, we fighting or we leaving? And we decided to leave because early fights with 15 squads remaining and the zone closing just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I decided to fence here just so I know if anybody decides to go around. Granted, they can't climb, but it will slow them down because they will have to take that extra few seconds just to catch up through the choke, which isn't a bad thing. So, again, seconds matter. Communication is key. Uh, and you cross the board, you'll realize that there's not a whole lot of hesitation when we're moving. You'll you'll notice later whenever Timmy has to explain on what he wants for a play, the experience what you get with a squad and knowing where to play and what to do is going to be vital. I make I make sure that we're going to the same building, but keep in mind my movement doesn't stop, right? My I don't stop my movement. Now here's another thing I could have done. I could put the gen closer to this edge and instead of putting it right there because then it gets pretty much blasted, right? Another tip that I also have for Watson players here. And this really helps us because the shield economy is pretty massive here in which we're able to save so many cells. Is that you see where I can put the gen? You'll see later I put it closer so to ensure it doesn't get blasted. But you'll notice also that I don't just fence inside the building. And I do this a lot as Watson as I fence the outside. I think of it as a first line of defense. I've said this many times in my guides. You want to make sure, excuse me, I had like a hiccup excuse me again, is that you want to make sure that you're fencing outside of the building because it's your first line of defense and you can always fence the inside of the building afterwards and it gives you information on where they're located. Very, very important. Now, my damage this round is a lot lower, but I'm also more or less defending the first floor and that I calm that multiple times to Timmy that I have the first floor so they can peek on the second floor. You'll notice if you ever go through the comms of the live stream that Johnny Flatout says he can't move and he just stands still and doesn't do anything because he can't do anything. And if you even look at his Twitter clip, he was lagging so hard to the point where everybody was just literally frozen in place. So this definitely was a disadvantage to our team, but there's still a lot to learn from this because, I mean, listen, we still got pretty good placement and we knew what the play was and we were very, very, very close to executing it flawlessly that could have actually gotten us in a really good spot. So just because you look at somebody who may not have gotten higher placement, maybe they didn't do as well, it literally makes a difference between potentially 10 to 5 seconds or even less, 3 seconds. And you're going to see in a second how those seconds matter, which is going to be a lead up to Thursday's video and why it's so important uh, with every second mattering. Because right now, I know I, I even called to Timmy that I'm pretty much holding up height and maintaining pressure. And the reason why I'm confident with this is one... I know Johnny's lagging, but I want us to maintain as much pressure as humanly possible. And I know that Jen can pretty much save economy, shield economy, because I, I, I you know, I know Timmy said we, I don't need to to play up top. And granted, I could have actually gotten blasted for free, but you'll notice how much the teams are respecting Timmy. And I would even say myself, the fact that I'm just on the roof and blasting for free and that they're just let at one point letting me just do what I want to do because they're showing a little respect regardless, right? You'll notice that the other Watson teams don't necessarily fence on the outside. I always recommend Watson's fence the outside just to, so they can live on the outside. It adds visual clutter and it maintains a lot more space and pressure, especially whenever they're running up because you can always put more fences on a dime very, very quickly at the front of the door. So that's just my tip for, I guess, any pro Watson, casual Watson. I played Watson a lot. A lot, a lot of Watson for a very long time, especially in more comp than even ranks. So I'm very confident with my abilities there with, with Watson. So essentially, we know where teams are at, and I know that it gets really slow here, but there's no reason to push anything. You push the team up top, then the team down below is going to push. If you push the team down below, then the team up top is going to push. So you, you're kind of in a, in a weird limbo, but you're pretty much going to let the zone do the work for you. And that's going to be the most important tip in terms of making sure that you're able to maintain as much pressure as humanly possible. So as we look back and forth, the G7, because I have so much ammo, is able to really maintain a lot of pressure. And I don't really run out of ammo, so I'm not really burning through a whole lot. And look at the, here's another I, best idea here. You see the perks of all the arc stars? I did ping them all because the fuse, and this is a great counter because legend comp starts to really change and make a lot of different impact in the game across the board because of AOE goes up in value because there's more people that you could potentially hit. Now, because Fuse goes up in value, so does Watson to counter, meaning that the perk in terms of getting Arc Star starts to go up. And so you have a net win across the board there. I, The only thing I wish it was able to do is just pretty much always play Watson during the whole tournament. 
But I, I urge all of you guys, when you're playing a team game, I cannot stress it enough. I said it earlier. I'll say it again. I'll say it a million times. Be flexible for the team play and what your team wants to do, not what you want to do. If you want to play a whole different way, then find different teammates. But if you're playing with randoms, then you kind of need to be a little bit flexible. This one was further back, by the way. I think the gen over by the stairs probably is better, but this one was further back right in the middle. Uh, so I put it in a better spot later, but this thing was getting shot from a distance, which was not good whatsoever. Just want to highlight that it's placement. When you're placing gen, you want to push it to the point where it's not getting blasted pretty much for free. And you're probably wondering as well why Timmy is playing that edge, especially whenever he could have gotten pushed and knocked, because it's important to maintain as much space as humanly possible, because the more space that you can occupy and maintain, that's why I say the fence is outside the building, then the more potential for knocks and things that can happen. Now, unfortunately here with all the teams nearby, it's, it is harder for me, per, perhaps in hindsight 2020, it would have been better for me to be on the second floor and then have Johnny on the first floor because he is lagging just to maintain a visual presence. And plus he is Newcastle, so he does have fortified, but at the same time, we did what we needed to do. And that was the pressure that we had. Even if Johnny wasn't lagging in the scenario, I think the only impact that it made, to be very honest, was the push at the very end. And you're going to see where it made the, the biggest impact, unfortunately. But it makes me feel reassured because I know that the play that we're making was very strong. And this is why it's important to also be very comfortable with the legends that you suggest if you can play a legend. Now, here's, I guess, another tip. Don't say you can necessarily just do something. Be upfront if you don't feel comfortable on it. So then the team can make an adjustment to what could or could not potentially work, right? So if you truly are not comfortable and can't play a specific legend or a play style, you have to be honest and upfront and communication is the only way you succeed as a team. It's why on the Saturday streams, I'm putting the worst case humanly possible by not being able to really talk with teammates. I think there was even debate recently with YouTube and the fact that certain words still might cause demonetization. So it's always an uphill battle, man, when it comes to YouTube. But at the same time, if that happens with that communication, you're able to tell kind of where people are positioning. I only have visibility on pretty much two teams. And when you're up top here, you have visibility. But if we're all looking in one spot, here's another thing. If you're all looking in one spot that you're not going to be able to net out very much at the end of the day. It's another very, very important thing. So make sure you're all pretty much putting pressure in different areas because you want to maintain pressure. So a team says you can't push that because they're too dangerous. Now the zone, you'll notice that we get very, very lucky here. Okay. Where it does pull south. Now it does pull away from us, but we technically have a lighter area to traverse than probably others on the northern side, which is why I say this play could have actually gotten us another top six or potentially top four or even a dub to be honest, because the team that did have the top of the building ended up getting second place. So we're pretty much battling for the right area. So that's why I say shout out to Timmy for his leadership. He knew exactly where we needed to play and you need to trust instincts. You can't debate and argue midway through because it's a battle royale and a lot of different variables do happen and you never really know what can or can not occur just as long as you play together and you're listening. So again, shout out to Timmy for taking the reins and just being an awesome. There you go. Better, John. That was a suggestion to Timmy. I agree with that. I think I put it in the better spot before. I think when they're stacked up, I think it was just more out there and they could have blasted it. Luckily, they didn't, but still, why risk that, right? So right now we're safe for this zone and I said I wasn't going to skip ahead, but I don't think very much really happens here because I do watch the first floor. And because we, we're worried about when the zone closes, Timmy does call for more fences inside. So I decide to start fencing more of the inside because this point there, the, the amount of space in which you can control is going to be less. So I start to posture up the inside and then clean up the specific areas. That fence could have been placed a little better. I needed to block the more of the inside here just to make sure the front of the doors are, are blocked off. And I'm just pretty much holding. I said I was going to watch floor, first floor, which is pretty much what I do. Uh, Timmy gives a suggestion of where he wants me to hold. And I do. And I, cause it, the, the thing is if I get cracked and they wide swing all four of them, I'm pretty much dead and that's it. And you can't necessarily let that happen. And you, it, and it shouldn't happen. Cause if it does, that's pretty much it. So skip us, skip ahead real quick. I do fix the fence there and let's look about the rotation. Cause it's probably the more important things. 
lock in the first floor, make sure our building isn't taken. And the bottom section here is where we're going to need to rotate. And we're going to talk about this rotation, how this is pretty much make and break. Let's discuss. All right, this is about 30 seconds before the big rotation. We know we need the roof of the building. That's what Timmy is calling. We can't necessarily take the building in front of us because it's occupied. And the downside here is I don't know if Johnny doesn't have the experience playing Newcastle, and I don't blame him at all. It's also hard because he's lagging. You're going to see the lag be very prominent here in this push. You'll notice a team that's flying in. As Timmy is explaining what he wants done, if he didn't have to explain where to put the ultimate, then this rotation could have happened. So look how we're going to re even rewind back. See how this team is landing right on top of us and Johnny is lagging. He's kind of moving, but he goes down very, very quickly because he just, he's just lagged out. It's not his fault, but we do a lot of damage here. I'm going to highlight how much, like it was literally at least three seconds. And because everyone's pretty much fighting for the roof here, we get blasted just by everybody. And it gets really confusing with quads, I will admit. So let's go back again here. Let's say during this explanation of where he wants it, let's say it was 15, even five, four, three, two, one. We probably already would have been able to go across efficiently. And you'll see when I pause up in the air, how close this was. If we already had Jen and I was able to fence and the wall was down from Newcastle to bump them off right here. Three seconds actually would have made the difference between us maintaining this roof with the Jen and Newcastle wall and fences to the point where it was unpushable. But even the lag, I know it, it, it seems it seems like we're nitpicking, ladies and gentlemen, okay? But even the lag where it goes right here, ready? One, two. So two seconds makes a big difference. Imagine getting the gen down two more seconds, getting there and being able to put even two more seconds, even him being able to place down a wall for two seconds, makes and breaks immensely here. And granted, yes, we get a lot of knocks. Timmy did an amazing amount of damage. I think Midwolves did too. Johnny just lagged out, and that is that is what it is. The, the, it's not a bad thing. There's no reason to get upset, you know? But you know what makes it great is that we know what we could have done, right? I know why my damage was lower when I was watching the bottom end because they had better angles to peek from. We know why the rotation was a little rough. And if you look here, they have height. They're able to start to really get a ton of kills in. And like I said, that roof is a really ideal spot. So trust your IGL, trust your teammates, trust the play. Even if it doesn't work, sometimes the worst plays can be the best plays. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to segue over to game number three. Now for game number three, this takes place on Olympus. I feel like I said World's Edge at one point. Which, if I did, I'm insane. Now, this team is with Trev Stacks, Oravane, and Greek. So, really strong squad. We do have, it's Timmy contesting our area north of Solar Ray. The strat that we're running, it's it looks really strange, but the strat we're running is going to be utilizing the Trident. It's why I had mentioned how important it is that I know it seems unorthodox because you could argue, well, just pull play Watson, just do this. But if your team captain is cooking and you feel like somebody's taking the lead and has an idea, you run the idea. And to be honest, it did work on the second one. Now, the first one, we made a lot of mistakes. And this round is going to be a lot shorter to cover. But we had our goals and we had our intention. You'll see how the second one, that it works out a bit more. It just was unfortunate timing and a circumstance of where we could have gone. And I know Trev had mentioned this where it was like hindsight 2020. We could have just kept going down or we could have just repositioned elsewhere. I, he mentioned the intention that he had with the play and you'll see it later was that maybe we can isolate one out in the building. Fuse AOE did a massive amount of work on us. And to be honest, I misplayed it. I think everyone across the board on the team misplayed it, to be honest. So there's not one person that could get angry and say, how oh, dare you, how come we didn't do this? Well, any of, one of us can, could, could have counter conned, but we went with the play and we did the best we could with it. Right. So the biggest thing you'll notice that the loop pattern again, always the same. I take the back end. The reason why I'm playing low is to get the key as fast as humanly possible. We open up that we the strat is we go to a trident and we put all four players on it and we use Gibby bubble to rotate because then we can't get blasted. Right. 
Now, you have to run Rampart in that scenario because you need the ability to have her on the back using the Trident as a gun so it doesn't take an extra seat. So that's how you're able to put four people on it. Now we have Bangalore for rotation and then we have, again, Rampart for those reasons. So, but for me here, we get the extra loot that we need from Lobo Ult initially because then our looting time is going to be a little chalked. And we also have it to finding the the key card as fast as possible. Now I do need to grab my weapons as I kind of move through and look for what I need to and just kind of stop looting, you know, and just like keep running. So I, I don't get the perfect loot pattern, but I do get it from the ultimate. I do get it from everywhere else that I need it and boom. So we have that. And we will the queue forward, be efficient. We get high tier loot out of this. We do get a, a purple bag, which means that we can step away with even more loot. And there is quite a bit in this area to pretty much grab. So very important to to highlight again the downside is here is just it just strictly comes down to a rotation and where we decided to stop i think we could have had a phenomenal game here you'll see we're just like wow i can't believe you guys did that and it's like well i mean everybody makes mistakes i i made mistakes you'll see it with my cue i was very embarrassed but then again i i knew what i was going for that's <laughs> if so i looked at it uh, yeah, we'll talk about that here in a minute. And uh, yeah, I was I was definitely embarrassed, but it is what it is. <laughs> I I mean I played low for quite a bit, so I was kind of shocked that I screwed that up as much as I did. But you'll see here in a second. All of us get burned by that fusel. Not to spoil too much. So I go for I have a gun that is like, you know, let's say ammo efficient. I got my hemlock for range, and I have I switched to a PK here for for close range. We have our time. We're going to go right to the trident and gives us rotation because it is a far pull. The next pull is actually a lot closer. And luckily, because we we would have actually came up with a lot of resources here as well. Drop down the ult. And then we get all four on the trident. It's a strat. One would argue it's not the best strat. And some would argue, wow, that's really innovative. And sometimes you just have to try things to try to get them to work. It's all you can do. And I encourage all of you guys, no matter your skill level, just to try new things and not be afraid so that you know exactly what you're kind of shooting for. So we do know we do know we have to go all the way over there and we need to find a good spot to anchor and hold. And then we can use Lobo Ult to grab whatever resources from anybody going down or anything that we do need. Now, if we do get blasted, the idea with the strat is that you have a Gibraltar bubble to place down if you get caught in a pinch to buy yourself some time to get into a building. And luckily as we're running around, you do have Sheila in the back to do some pressure just in case you need to keep blasting from the back as well. But we are able to get really far. It's just the place that we decided to get off really, uh, really punished us. We're pinging where we need to go. They're discussing. You know, at this point, I, I do let them. I mean, they're in the driver's seat, so all I can do is kind of just follow. But even uh, there, here's another thing you can do as a teammate. Vocalize. But at the moment, I didn't really know either. So if I don't know, then I can't say anything. And it becomes one of those things. I think some people kind of take this a bit to the extreme where they'll mention something and they'll make it seem like they were the ones that had all the knowledge and they know exactly what to do. But in the moment, it is a skill set of knowing what is the right option out of the variables. Because you could say, let's park here. Let's get off here. Let's wait for the fusel to disappear. Let's hold the bottom. Let's jump down to the bottom. And you're going to see the major mistake that did happen here. Because we're getting shot in the back. We do see that they're very split. The Gibraltar bubble does save us a lot of HP. Now, we've all been pretty hurt here. And to be fair, another thing I could have done. I need to sell at least once here before I go up. We do hear the comm to put, push forward. Now I'm gonna pause right here. My intention is to use the Q to go over the flames. I screwed it up because I, I was gonna try to move it forward out of the bubble there, which I was out for a second. And then I take a lot of burning damage. Everyone does. So Trev went in the cleanest. All of us pretty much got burned as we went in. I had a, a bad Q. We needed to play more patient to get to our spot. And then we get eliminated. But because we were shot there to begin with, we should have held and played a little more patient. I could have played a little more patient on the angle that I was at, and so much could have gone better. That's all I can say. Everything could have gone better on our end. And sometimes when you make a play, that is just how it goes. There's nothing else that you could really say. 
We know what to clean up. We even said it next time. I did make some suggestions in between, which is why I'm playing it back again, where I said, why don't we just play Watson, just kind of work our way in slowly. And I said, you know what? If you guys are confident with it, we run it back again. And you're going to see where it actually works out and plays much better the second time where, hey, this, this strat can work. It's a little weird. It's not the ideal comp of what everyone's running. And it's strange uh, to probably for some, but it can be played up. It, we prove that it can work. So that's what we're going to see in game number four is how it does work. And instead of the mistakes that you see here, I, I think across the board, every single person made a mistake. It's okay. It happens. We go again. Now, the reason why I'm going to the very back, just in case it does spawn closer, the key card and you'll notice that we have a very similar path on what we're doing we're pretty efficient i do grab some of these bins i change up just a little bit here just to grab what i need and then we pretty much move forward i'm looking just for the ideal loadout that is going to be at least most comfortable so i can pretty much rock close range long range and then we pretty much move forward and loot we do know like that last time we weren't really pushed and shoved here so there was less concern and less to worry about so it can lighten up because most players, when they play a certain way, are always going to play in a similar pattern. They usually don't go to the way and do something strange and uh, and not what you would expect. So little tip there. Now, the hard part when you play a battle royale, especially in ranked, is that you have a lot of unknown variables. You can land in the same spot and you could be contested that time. Maybe nobody lands near you. Maybe the next time there's a million teams, maybe there's no teams. And so when you're playing comp, you do get a sense of a little bit of consistency and what you need to do and it more or less becomes more of the center so there is a difference between pubs ranked and comp you what you learn is about the unknown variables and what you learn is how other players play which is another good tip and then whenever you're more or less in the pro lobbies they tend to play out you start to be able to predict patterns because you know what the ideal and best play is going to be ideally so we get the resource here the reason i pass it up is i give that to our gibraltar i give them also the res i take the helmet just for now, I do pass this off later, to be honest. Another thing, hindsight 2020, is I probably should have given the helmet to anybody else. Maybe the Rampart. I do give it later to Gibraltar. I just wasn't thinking in this moment about the helmet. And those those are little things you can always clean up. Every little thing can be cleaned up. That's why I say focus on you. Focus on your game and what you can do. And it'll go a really long way. And you may be asking, well, Daz, it seems like last game, what could you have done? Just place my cue better countercom that we need to not hold here uh, hold or you know move, be there and hold or just wait for the fire to go out and then i can probably push them as they or gate them as they start to push in there's so much that i could have done in that scenario that could have helped the team across the board that's why it's a team-based game now we are closer we do point center map that's ideal to hold so that's pretty much where we go we don't have as, as far to traverse which is good but it does lean us again when you know where you can quote unquote say God spot is you go there. Now, here's another tip for ranked. If you're trying to figure out where great spots are, especially like on Olympus or everywhere, you look to those positions where the zone more likely is going to pull. And then you say how many areas, what areas can we hold? Sometimes it's better in ranked to go towards those areas and work your way out rather than being late and building the habit of being late to every rotation. Now, uh, there is a, a counterpoint to that is that you can also learn to play edge which is also a viable comp. That depends if you have aggressive legends or if you're playing control-based legends. Controller-based legends would be the Rampart, Caustic, Watson, and Catalyst. So this team does pretty much live near us and we coexist with them pretty much the whole entire time. We do have another idea where we could have put the car in front. The hard part here is that we don't have any Outside of Rampart, we don't have any economy-based legends. I guess you can call me low with the economy-based legends to grab more shields. But we do burn through a lot of resources. You'll notice one thing that I also do very, very quickly is just to make sure we maintain pressure. Because we all can't stay in here. Otherwise, we're just going to keep burning through cells. So I'm one of the first that leave and starts to maintain pressure on the outside. Just to ensure that we maintain space. Maintaining space is very, very important. I go back in, drop the ult, go back out. Because you can't just all stay huddled because if they do a significant amount of damage or get an amazing grenade, anything of that nature, then you're you're pretty much screwed. And don't be afraid to, to main, maintain pressure. The only reason when you stop is when there's too many teams in the area or two, you no longer have the heals to be able to do so. I know it seems like it would be very dumb to even hold the roof here, but if I'm maintaining pressure and holding them out, then that's a, definitely a dub. 
in general, which is why you keep looking around. You have multiple people looking in different areas. You all can't just look at the same team. You pull focus and switch to the other team depending on how much pressure that you do maintain. So that's very important. So let's take a look. I, I do move up a little bit. It's definitely a little bit ballsy, but imagine I was able to get a get an opening here. I honestly would say across the board, I wouldn't have mind being a more floaty and floating around as well to maintain pressure. I do stop once I realize that I think I get shot in the back over here. I do try to grab as many uh, grenades and resources as humanly possible. I wait for the smoke to go away. But I'm pretty sure I just get shot in the back here in a second and then it pretty much stops that push. No, I guess I don't get shot in the back. I think I'm okay. Yeah, we're good. I just needed to... I think here in a second I do get shot in the back. Let's see here. No, I guess we're good. I was surprised. Huh. But checking all angles, I think right now we are highly focused because we do... It may be great to get them out, to be honest. But they're also not pushing us out either. So another thing to kind of maintain and be kind of aware of and maintain a bit of confidence, just because if there's the other team that decides to show up and so our time is essentially kind of gone. If another team is also not pushing, it means they're also in the same boat concerned if they can safely make a play, right? Otherwise they also would have pushed, so they're in the same boat. So with that, you can confidently start to move around and maintain a lot more pressure especially if you feel the hesitation from them. You can tell that they're not pushing up on us. Otherwise, they would have maintained more space. If anything, I was probably the one that maintained the most pressure by running out and being a weirdo, right? Until we got shot mostly in the back. Now, there's not a lot of resources here, and so it does slow us down in terms of resources when we don't have as much shield cells and economy, and that definitely slows things down because you will get to a point where you can't even heal up and do very much. Now, Loba does have more value as enemies get eliminated towards the end and that's kind of what we're looking for here i know for some individuals that may comment it may seem pretty boring but at the end of the day you can apply this also to pubs and knowledge and how you maintain pressure because i that's why i say i mean maybe it could have gone up and tried to make a play and done something right it's just in comp a lot of people tend to play a lot more safe because you want to play for what is a hundred percent not for what is even a oh there's a 50 percent chance to win that fight well 50 percent chance means that you're going to lose potentially the, the chances are pretty high unless you get that massive knock or you get that x y and z other variable you catch somebody out somebody gets caught in ultimate you know this is when we're doing all these poking you're essentially looking and prodding for somebody to make a mistake, but when everyone is of good skill level, everyone is using correct cover, correct positioning, the mistakes don't necessarily happen as much. And in ranked, they become very apparent to how you can bait a mistake or just do more damage than another person to the point where it's like, oh my gosh, we can we can do this or we can fight this, right? Even maintaining pressure over here, it might be able to get a knock, but unfortunately we don't. You do notice that, that later because we gate, we do we are able to See, pretty much gated team for free. I think I, I overlaid the footage at the start of the, this video, pretty much covering that as well. Like I have a lot of ammo, and because you have a lot of ammo, you shouldn't be shy about shooting. Here's another tip. Whenever you're doing a lot of this, it's never be shy just to miss and shoot. You never know what shots you're going to land. And the only way that you get better at it is by blasting. That's pretty much it. Now, here's another downside is when you're playing at high tier lobby, if you miss too many shots and you're not maintaining pressure, they get confident because they realize, wait a minute, this person's missing. We have the opportunity to move up on this. Now, when you're playing in a tournament, though, everyone makes the assumption of equal skill level, so they get afraid to maintain pressure and shoot. If you have all that ammo, you don't want to end the round with all that ammo in your inventory or else you had too much ammo. Now, one thing that was different in quads, I know you get more ammo in your inventory, which is a little strange, and that kind of threw me off for some of the ammo count, not going to lie. Kind of tripped me up. I was like, I shouldn't be having this much ammo. I should be probably around 240 now, you know, because I, the stacks go up into 90 instead of 60, and so that number, it, it does throw you off because it is it is a different amount than what you may be used to. And, of course, I have a purple bag, so, hey, I got ammo galore, so that's the, the, the plus side there. Now, when you're all looking at different angles, it's important that you just maintain pressure on your side. And if you want to swap with somebody, just calm that you want to take the other side, just to if you want to make a play and make a push. I think this is the interesting part, and it's hard whenever you don't know the success rate of your teammates, because these teams are randomized. 
So you don't necessarily know what the chances of you winning an encounter if you do push, if you're not aware of your team's skill set. So that does happen. And let's just say I just start cooking and say I'm going in, I'm pushing. And you'll see that actually happen here in a second. Whenever we do make a play, I just pretty much reinforce and say, hey, go in. You listen to the comms, just kind of like, hey, let's fight, let's do this. And that's where the confidence kind of reigns in. Because nobody wants to be, and this is the hard part, it's where the ego gets in the way. Nobody wants to be the first one that makes, an, makes a mistake. Nobody wants to be that individual. Because then you're the one who gets put out there. And you're going to see me make that mistake later. So... We all do it. It's okay. So that's why I'm, I'm telling you here in this pretty much podcast very much so I realize it's me just talking with you, talking your ear off. I apologize. Hopefully you're getting a lot of information just by watching. In a second, you're going to notice that we were able to gate the team on the far left, which really helps. I have a bow, so I'm able, I, I know I'm, if I can catch somebody, this can be a great way to essentially shove something. You know what makes it really hard for quads and trios? If you even see one go down, 3v2 is very, very doable and winnable. I think a lot of the problem that happened in quads is that fights are extended for such a long time. It, they're not fast cleanups because especially with like a lifeline or any other legend, there's so much utility that you have to deal with that can really slow down a fight that is really, really annoying. But I will say the extended fights are a lot more fun to watch on on quads because you know they're not as fast and they are extended for quite some time so i will say that there was some stuff to learn in quads but like i said i think my confidence definitely was is also i mean probably every pro here is more or less used to trios because you're even if you get one knocked and you're like okay well i'm still having to deal with three more individuals and that is more than enough to sway the fight and you'll see that later when that happens it's not just the 3v2 and it doesn't work as cleanly because i mean you'd be surprised i mean the amount of ammo that you can run and the amount of legends that become more viable it would be interesting to see more competitive in quads i think that there is something here uh, but it would definitely take some some more balancing at the end of the day but i do appreciate the fact that it was more different comps i mean look i'm i'm literally playing lobo which is insane so I'm trying to do as much damage here since I have this end and this is my spot to pretty much watch. I do get one knock. We do see if anything does appear. Unfortunately, it doesn't. I had to burn another battery, unfortunately. But we do get a lot of resources here in a minute. Which does help a ton. Now, in a second, once the zone closes, that's where everything just pretty much goes downhill. That's why I say it's important to maintain your pressure, choose your fights. It's why I'll give you give you a little secret. This is why I've been playing Alter this season. I've been playing Alter to learn how to play more aggressively. I know that I have that aggression in me, but I don't have the experience. My experience definitely comes in playing long range from Battlefield 4. Though that's my strengths that I have as a player. I'm sharing them here because that's what you're pretty much seeing me do. I'm maintaining pressure on various teams and nobody is able to run up for free because the pressure is just there and it's present, right? But I also need to have that same pressure close range. So being a well-rounded player is is so important rather than just being, oh, I can only do close range. I can only do long range. I would say my long range is a lot stronger. And so, yeah, that's something just to be mindful of. You can't just be good at one thing. Try different legends, push yourself in different boundaries because I've always played Watson. I've always played a support. I It just kind of happened because, I mean, I happen to be a better Watson whenever who, compared to anybody else who played Watson. Now, it's important to also listen to comms, and you'll notice immediately, even though I have pressure on something, whether it's right or wrong, I, I, I'm calming right now to focus on this, which they do listen, because I'm maintaining a lot of pressure here, and they pretty much get eliminated. I do start pressuring out a different team, but then they do calm for me to focus elsewhere, and I immediately pull my focus, despite me having a potential knock. So I do have a lot of pressure here. And I am calming for it to happen, but notice how there is a split calm here. I pull away regardless, and I say, you know what? Everyone's over here. This is the smarter play. I focus this way. I pretty much drop everything I'm doing within a heartbeat and maintaining pressure here. And it does work. And it does work in our favor to maintain this pressure together rather than being split. We say this is the team we need to focus in, Geno. That, that is a team. I immediately stop what I'm doing. Because at the same time, we were both focused in two different areas literally at the same time. But I queued away and I said, this is where we need to focus. Focus fire is so important as your team because you're able to eliminate teams fat more efficiently. You're able to maintain pressure on more of a team rather than just being caught in the middle. And being more secure rather than being split is 
it's so vital. Now here we get to get all our resources back up. I get to grab my, my batteries and everything I need. Just grab, so I grab four, pretty much set. I mean, the only thing I can really grab is ammo. So I think I grab just a million ammo for the sake of it. I don't even really think I do. I mean, I have so much. I mean, it's the only thing I could grab. And we do have to worry about the zone here. And at one point you'll see that we just shove in and it's important to give comms and confidence that you're with your teammates to maintain pressure and move forward. At one point we say, if we're going to go north, I trade the helmet. I realize I've been stupid the whole time for holding it. I should probably not have held it. I hindsight 2020, uh, that's, that's on me. Just be aware of the helmet. It's, it's, a, it's just a simple thing. We do need a building. We have to fight for something. There's not just, oh, okay, we hold outside a zone. We need to fight for something for it to work. If we don't, then that's pretty much it. I think we do get a knock here. We do right here. Boom. Good damage. I call it to finish because we're so close to finishing it. Now, Greek says that he's pushing. He wants to take first floor. Says that somebody's there. I back out. They move back up. Trev just decides to blast away. And I say, you know what? Screw it. Let's all go in. Immediately, even before that, I just start blasting as much as possible. And I think I'm one of the, yeah, we're the, like, we're just bar barely in. Greek moves up. I go in with him just in case, just in case there's another person up there. And then we come here. So this is where the mistake happens. Okay. We, I know resources were low, but we all should have started looking and holding immediately, especially because we're healthy. We don't need other resources. It's funny how fundamentals, and I'm pausing here, go out the window immediately. How fast does it just boom out the window? Whenever we know better, essentially. It's because you're in a high pressure situation and high pressure, it's like throwing free throws when you're playing basketball. Just doing them in your backyard by yourself, you're going to be better than throwing them in a stage full of 10,000 people and over a million people watching you know, on their televisions. So see here, a team does run in. I pretty much go just right into it just to face plant it to maintain as much damage as possible. A lot of hindsight 2020 here. Okay, a lot of it. One, we all could have already maintained pressure and looked, you know, or it could have armor swapped and then looked. Trev could have just maintained our smaller space here rather than going to the other area. I didn't need to loot. I could have just started holding as well and, you know, held the door and then just looked. I think Greek was probably the one actually maintaining and looking, which is why he got caught out. So I mean, Greek probably was fine. But again, hindsight 2020 and what we should have done, because I mean, this close, this fight was close. They got third in afterwards. We actually could have gotten placement. We could have maintained pressure here. And yeah, it just, I guess it is, it is what it is. I, I could have played that better. I sh shouldn't have got distracted by grabbing loot on the ground. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You don't need it. Like, well, I, there's nothing on the floor that I need. Let's put it out that way. Nothing I needed. All right. Nothing was going to help me do any better in that circumstance. I needed to maintain pressure, pull up my gun and just be ready to blast. And I, and I didn't. And that's, that's on me there. Uh, and that's on a lot of us because we could have done a lot of things better and differently here but otherwise i mean imagine we won that fight and then we're holding like i could have just held up top and just waited there you know maintain as many angles as possible and pressure is so it's so important because they just uh four mans swung here but again when you look at what happened a lot of trades happened they go down and yeah that's that's brutal it sucks but uh shout out to my teammates they're they're amazing this strat you notice the second time it worked it wasn't bad wasn't bad, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take those dubs where we can. Now I'll leave it here because this is the next round. Uh, the teams are shuffled. My teammates, what number was I around here? I don't even, oh, uh, let's go back. Okay, okay, there we go. I'm with Verholz, Clara, and Samurai Sky. We were team number 13. Uh, we had a strap where we were taking divide. I was gonna take an area with Verholz. Shout out to Verholz, uh, an amazing dude. I, I love what he does. Shout out to Verholz if you haven't followed him. Love that guy and everything that he uh, does online. Love his passion. And I love his work ethic with his team. So big shout out to you, dude. Appreciate tons for putting up with me. Shout out to everyone who put up with me during this tournament, okay? Just, uh, you know, hey, I it's been a hot minute since I competed. Uh, I, I Trust me, I'm hungry. I, I, I want this more than anything to always get better at this game. So I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm learning a lot, too, just by Bond reviewing. Hindsight 2020 for all this stuff. But again... Yeah, there's always options and things you could have done better. Honestly, I could have held more grenades last round. Maybe I could throw the grenades as maintain pressure as well, mate. Grenades are always key. One mistake I, I also do. So Samurai, Clara, and Verholst are our teammates for this round. Now the downside is here we had a lot of 
server problems, so we had a lot of downside. We naturally fit more cohesively to our main roles. We played Lifeline, Watson. We played Bang the first round, then we switched over to Pathfinder. And then we had Fuse, so a lot of great pressure. So the reason why we're both landing over here is just to get a little bit extra loot on this side, but also maintain pressure in space. Our loot pattern, again, always the same. Where we land, we grab what we need. Could have been a little bit cleaner. And then we're pretty much able to rotate through. Got to be fast. The faster you are with your loot, the the better you're going to be. I go ahead and hit the bins and I loot the building. We actually flip flop here for the next one. And we do switch that up. Across the board, I always tend to run some sort of a sniper DMR and something along those lines. And then I run some sort of close range and because in this case, I'm going to run a Mastiff. I think I swap this to another G7. And oh, there we go. Yep. I have 3x. Boom. Easy loadout. And a lot of these guns, you mean pretty much easy to find or interchangeable. And you're going to find them once you find a loadout. It's like you can interchange. When you when you find the guns you can interchange, you're going to never really have a struggle with your loadout. There's always going to be G7, 3030 30 longbow, Sentinel somewhere on the ground. If you want to run a secondary, and you're like, okay, I want to run Shotgun, Havoc. Uh, you know, you've got, you got an option to Master, Peacekeeper, Havoc, Volt. R99, but probably older meta, but you get what I'm trying to say. There's there's a lot more options there available for you. We go ahead and hit this. And we find out where our end zone is. And interestingly enough, I call it right away. Being here would be game winning spot. So I share that information with the team of where we want to go. We actually, oddly, you know, I know for whole said the likelihood of us getting is pretty low, but we actually do end up in that area. I just wish I didn't throw during that encounter. Wish I played a lot better. Now, uh, like I said, that's why I said shout out to them. Hindsight 2020, what it could have done. I know better. Uh, when I look at these VODs, I'm like, I, I know better. But I don't get mad at myself. I'm just like, the more you do it, the more you're likely to make the right decision. Right? And that's why I say at some point, you got to have some time investment and a lot of patience when you're doing this. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself some patience because you may have topped out with a really strong decision, but it doesn't mean you're going to be able to do that same thing over and over and over again, right? You have to get comfortable with it. You have to be consistent with it for it to work. Otherwise, it just, unfortunately, it won't. I think at one point we were going to just run it on foot. I was like, oh yeah, there's a zip line. I'm dumb. Little things go a long way. Otherwise, I would have been caught up a little bit faster, but overall pretty solid. All we got to do is just follow and work our way in. Which is interesting with four mans that actually there, it feels like the map has a lot more space. And the reason for that is because there's an extra group of individuals that are not like, there's not another group of three running around. It's just quads running around. So the likelihood of being able to get in and find space and then share spaces in the zone become a lot higher, which is why I actually kind of enjoy quads on a competitive level because you don't necessarily have to be crammed for as much space because the other person's pretty much of the group and then the fights are a little longer. So then people aren't necessarily just going to shove everything because they know the fights are going to be long. And you don't want to get third partied. You've seen what happens when you play quads. You never, you don't want to be the middle of the sandwich. You want to be pretty much on the outskirts of the fight so that you can work your way out and then work your way in and have that utility to work your way around. So at this point, it's important to also, when you're moving, loop, but be efficient and fast. I could not pick that up for the life of me. And then keep moving. We're following our fearless leader, Verholst. Our man with the plan. We calm one way. And also, you know, I actually do give suggestions on where to go. I think this is where I finally started to come into my own a little bit. I think I'm more comfortable with the strat of playing Watson. I know the other strat of Loba and everything, I wasn't as confident, but it was also a little simpler of where we need to go. It's why, you know, I calmed to kind of just push at one point, and then I believe I calmed to push. And so I had to go back in the VOD myself, but I remember saying, go, 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 I got your back, Greek, and like giving that, that positive affirmations of the squad. And even if you lose, you got to keep the vibes high. One of the biggest things that will tear apart a squad is when anybody in the team is just negative. It, it'll tear down a squad. Now, Unless, I guess you could say, here's maybe the other side. Maybe if somebody's passionate and they're raging, I guess, at the end of the day, if they're performing well, then it'll just light a fire underneath people to perform better. So, I mean, hey, everyone works and thinks a little differently, right? Just a few tips and trying to keep the mental as high as possible. 
because people crumble under pressure and you don't necessarily i don't want to paint the picture as if it's a uh, congratulations everyone gets a pat in the back we're all winners no not everyone can be a winner no we can't all be winners what no there's always one winner at the end of the day it's just a matter of keeping the vibes high so the energy is there you'll notice that whenever morale goes down people's energy depletes and you need that energy and that yeah i'm about to get in there screwed. it's like like uh, you know just uh, that adrenaline just needs to kick you need that you probably feel in the video now like yeah we're all hyped up guys let's, let's, let's do a line wait a line of what what are you talking about that I, like, oh, I don't know what's going on you say like that can change the the pressure in all of the sort of because we were going one minute from just like hey calm we we're talking about things and now all of a sudden the energy has changed all right and keeping that energy i i just i i personally feel is is really really important i guess because whenever i did plays and shows I can only I can only relate by acting because I I wasn't a part of like any basketball team or anything, but I did a lot of musical theater, I did a lot of plays, a lot of film things. And so keeping the morale high is so important because the minute somebody loses the morale, then the energy's gone, and then it just feels like you're trudging along, and it's a nightmare. It just sucks endlessly. And I feel that also in ranked. Right now we're just maintaining pressure. We're just waiting, and having everybody look at a different spot is key because we're just maintaining pressure and looking around as much as possible because we're gonna wait and kind of play a little edge and look for an opportunity to work our way in. But then we found the opportunity to kind of duck and weave and we still ended up right in the middle of the map, which is fantastic. And so even though you play edge, you never know if you can just kind of work your way in and find a spot. And that's where you, you use rotation. I think a lot of people also use the word that they can't, or I don't know if I can cross, I can't do that. And you never know until you do it. You know, you, There's a few things you can do, some tips when you're crossing. Pay attention to the bullet count, if they're blasting away with, uh, let's say, a hemlock and you hear them shoot four times, well, it's going to take a lot for them to knock you. So by the time they try to blast away, if they don't have a mag, then they're probably already going to have to reload at one point. I think this pulls over to bridge side. So that's what we say. Yeah, it's not bad. That's why I was like, that would be great. And then work our way to the other end. So we pull, we, uh, I know Verholst countercoms here to say south. And so we, pl we play south, but then we pretty much get gated there. And so we don't really know exactly where to go and where to play at that point but then I counter calm and we go the other way and it's just a matter of poking here's, here's an example of when you're looking for spot you're looking for the weakest area to kind of push from which area is going to give you the highest probability from poking that you feel like has a flaw in their hold there's some places where you hold you're like holy crap they had a Kraber and they're just shooting us with like 10 30 30s we're never going to get in there okay well then that one is an Im impossible way to work your way through but what about this other side they're not even shooting at us. Uh, we're kind of able to kind of run up for free. What if we threw like a bangled and then Gibraltar bubble at the bottom and then we end up in the bottom underneath them? Well, there you go, right? You, you're, you're essentially feeling out the pressure and that's why I say maintaining presence and pressure is everything because then you don't let the other team start to think about what you can and cannot do. I think it's crazy. I mean, I guess it's from my experience of like casting ALGS. I've seen all aspects of this. I've seen the aspect of keeping up pros and their mental up from being, you know, like a player manager to signing the, helping sign the contract for the players themselves or content creators to seeing the front end and playing a, like ALGS way back in the day when it was first starting to just playing rank to playing pubs. I've seen virtually every part of this game. Now I wish in the certain areas, of course, I, I would always love to play better. Anybody would, you know, you want to always play better, but I guess that's why I'm trying to impart to you as much knowledge as i can you know so maybe i mean again that's why i say all of you guys can at some point probably do it better i'm gonna be fighting for you guys to also do it just as good if not better so that was a tough push they got a catalyst catalyst is pretty hard to push and they're pretty much propped up so then we go this other route and say okay what's over here then now granted they didn't shoot at us but it's never fun blasting away at a catalyst team there's 13 squads remaining kind of gives us a little buffer we come out this way they start shooting us right away, which makes it pretty hard. Meaning that if we need to push through here, we're gonna have to push through this team and potentially another team. And so that's gonna make it hard to push through. We need to find a nice, clear way to get in. And we do find it. So I say, you know what, let's go on the other side and let's just rotate right away, which is what we do. So we rotate. So shout, shout out to Verholst for uh, letting me uh, interject and, and calm as well. Dude's a very flexible and malleable IGL and um, he's a good dude. Clara and Samurai are also amazing. I love the, I, I, this, this squad is also, I mean, every squad has been amazing. Just highlighting it's, it's enjoyable, especially with players that all want it and are excited. 
I needed, here's another hindsight. I should have calmed. I know I ping it, but I should, I should always calm if I'm going to start blasting. Uh, unfortunately, I whiff. They're blasting and running around. But I could have calmed that I was going to do that. Hit him for 99. But of course, they have red. So a little bit to contend with. We have 40 seconds to rotate. That team, we still need to shove through. We don't know if anybody's behind our back doing a late rotation. I'm going to craft an extra bat here for safe measure. To be honest, it was definitely worth it because if I had a bat in hindsight 2020 in this encounter, it would have made a very, very large difference. If you're watching it to this point, comment down below. I know this is a very long video, uh, and I hope that it gives you guys a lot of tips and thought process about everything. Now, here's the thing that when you're looking at the pressure of the team, that Verholz is able to pretty much run in without any pressure back, but also nobody of our team has taken any damage. So their posturing up and holding here has essentially started to dwindle. And because we're able to move up for free, you can tell versus the other battle that we shot where we're instantly taking damage and then halted and just going from one spot and getting cracks, it, it opens up opportunities. Okay, they have blue. We're able to maintain pressure. We have this. This is a great opportunity. So now we just got to find our way in. You know, Fuse Ult has gone out to give us those scans. And now we're just waiting for another mistake, another crack, essentially. So then we know what, you know, if we can move in. Verhul starts wake, making his way in. So therefore, it gives us all confidence to move in. I hold the cross just to make sure I can do some damage if I'm able to. The grenades that Verhul are throwing are to find some entry there. Unfortunately, no, I don't know if he got any damage from that at all. And so they decided to go for the flank. And so we stick together. Claire's a little further behind, but it's okay. Uh, Verhul still watches angle here. Hit him in the head. Another team third parties us, and then we have to pretty much reset and hold. Now, we don't really hold here. I call just to watch out for the window in case somebody tries to blast us from there, and then we move. So I do get cracked in the back. Oh my gosh, imagine if I didn't, if I had that extra bat, that would actually been, would have been huge. And to be honest, so I wonder if I could have just probably selled instead. We decided to rotate. I, call, I personally call for the rotation saying, let's just go north. Because we do have this opportunity to hold because this team has to leave. The reason why I call that is I personally know that there's no way that this zone actually pulls to where they're at and we can gate. So I just start fencing and anchoring here because this is a great spot to hold because then we can deal with bridge afterwards or deal with our backs and gate. Now they are fighting pretty intensely over there and the team does calm to run over. So I don't second guess it. I agree. It would be nice to get them out early because I'm taking a look at this other team over here. And it 100% would be better to get them out sooner rather than later. Especially if we know that our backs can be cleared. I, one could say it, it could be greedy. We could have played it more patient. But you live together, die together. Okay. One could say, let's play it slower. But there's a lot of hindsight 2020s. Okay. We could have played it slower and gated them. That's option one here. Now, once we get the knocks and the team finishes, we could have backed up from the counter completely. I got hit from the side, which slows me up just a little bit. I decided to go to the gen. I don't waste a bat because I need the bats in the encounter. 100% and so I slide in I know that luckily the Watson passive is a little faster and some of the I do calm that I'm a little further back Samurai gets an amazing shot here and we decide to work our way in the evac tower is there I once was further behind and now I pretty much aggress that one team is dead I don't know how I see this person here and I was super confused about that it's like they're being resed what is oh they oh maybe they were okay that was just a finish okay I was like what is that body there we do hear the res going off, which is why we go for a push. Fortunately, a lot of damage has gone out. We go for a bat. Now, this is my last bat, and this is what we could say hindsight 2020 of what it could have done here. So once everyone's healed up, we say, okay, we're going to drop. We're going to push in like three, two, one. So we all drop. Look for an opportunity. Blast these things out. 85. And this is going to be our opening here in a second. Boom. There's the opening. There's a knock. So I do pop one cell just to get in. And I do unfortunately get cracked. Now, here's another thing I could have done. A lot of hindsight 2020 in this fight, okay? I could have gone for the finish and gone for the armor swap. That probably wouldn't have been best because instead of just pushing forward, it is a 3v2. I know better than to keep pushing forward. I know I want to maintain pressure to get this fight done because we have 48 seconds on the clock, okay? This is probably one of the most important teaching moments here. And honestly, I probably should have had it at the start. But I mean, the games are the way they are. So if you're watching this point, awesome. You're going to learn a lot from this moment here. Because I could have gone for the armor swap there. Or I could just pop cells and slow down my roll here. But at the same time, this team in front of us could have gated. But I did have fences preemptively set up over towards the POI. But then the problem is that if we don't get this done fast enough, then the team over on the bridge is also going to gate us. So it does need to be fast. So there's a few things I have to do. I need to pretty much shield heal. 
which is going to take me a significant amount of time. If I go for the swap, that would have been my faster option. Now seeing that now, if I, but I also have to reload my gun. So because we say push and clean this out, I actually bunny hopped kind of go in and ADS. Now, because of this, I don't get the damage that I'm looking for. I was off on my shot here, unfortunately, but I was also the first one in, uh, and that caused us to, uh, to lose the fight. I will put the blame all on me here. I should have just slowed it down. Uh, I was a little hasty. I, I, you know, while we did calm to push in it, that was my bad for playing a little too aggressive. I needed to pull it back. I, I, the best, the best decision, honestly, here, once this happens, go for the swap. I honestly, that's, that's the best play. I should have gone for the swap. It's such a simple thing. Reload the gun, go for the swap, let them push forward, let them find the opening. And then I go for the flank while they push in. But hindsight 2020, because even if I went in there and hit one for 99, I wonder if that would have been, one could have said like this actually could have worked. But at the same time, going down does re lower our, our reset time. So at the, at the end of the day, that's why I, I said this multiple times. I even said it to Verhulst, for Verhulst, I apologize to the team and said, guys, that was on me. That could have been played better. I know better. I know better in this situation. So because I know better, I call myself out on this. And it, it does seem like such a simple thing, but it goes a very, very long way. And Verhulst is a beast. He did a lot of damage here. And that is just where, where we landed out. I think our team synergy was fantastic. Uh, look at Verhulst's damage, a beast. I, I just, I kick myself because I know better. And Granton, like, yeah, I just, I don't know what to say besides that. I know better, I know better, I know better. And now I see it. I just, I, I've said, I told you guys too about ducking and weaving. And right there, I just got red in my eyes. I was like, we got this. Urgh, the vibes are good. And just, you know, it get, you know, it gets the best of us, right? But we live and we learn. Let's get to the next final round, ladies and gentlemen. Now for the last round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip a, a little bit. Now that you kind of see the rotations are always the same, everything kind of works out in that way. You can look back at the VOD. You'll see that Verholst and I land in the same spot and divide. We know we're rotating where we're going. The thing that did change is that Verholst is playing Pathfinder in this one. But the reason why I want to be respectful of your time, I realize I probably have been talking your ear off too much, so I apologize for that. But I hope that you've enjoyed the video up until this point and you get to see the final round. Now, it's interesting. We all kind of calm the same spot that that is the best spot to hold. I'm glad that we're kind of all in agreement and we are going to be in a holding pattern over here. But we're going to maintain a lot of space and this is going to get us top six. Which is going to be our next round for, for me, for us earning money. So I just step away. Hey, we made money. We got money. Uh, money. I like money. Do you like money? And the same thing, say, uh, maintaining pressure, showcasing presence is always important. Fencing the outside of the building is always key. Putting Jen in an ideal spot. I know where people are, where my teammates are going to hold. The the biggest, you know, the honestly, the only mistake that happened here is literally just the last moment of when we should have pushed. I think everything else leading up to this was fantastic. I want to say, and I, you know, I just, I don't want to gloss over this, but we really start our synergy and Verhulst can, if he ever watches this video, it can comment if I'm wrong, but I think our, our synergy was, was starting to get like really, really solid as a squad, you know, outside of me making a, a blatant mistake, I think we, we were really rocking it. You know, I think here we, we held it together. We maintained pressure, the, you know, we occupied space and we knew exactly where to hold and where to go and how to work the area. And so we're skip ahead, let's skip ahead to that. Now, because we have such a great spot and where we ping on the map in the upper left, you'll see that is actually game winning spot. I wish I knew Broken Moon, the new one a bit better because I didn't think that spot was actually going to be a game winning spot. I actually thought ours was going to be even stronger, which is why I held here. I think all of us kind of thought that. I think the team did end up underneath us, which is why I fenced the living heck out of that area. And I go look because they're just kind of living underneath but not pushing us, which gives us free shots across the way just to pretty much eliminate all of these guys for free, essentially. And get a knock here. Nice, good pressure. All the teams pretty much have to respect our spacing. We're able to just, they can't even stay there. We calm that. And this is when it, when things work, you know, it's like, this is just where things are just flat out GG's and we're winning. So we do have a slither in, but there's just not enough space there at the bottom. And you'll find out later where the tree is there. I'm like, dude, there's no space. That if we went over to those pillboxes that they zipped across on, that was the game winning spot. That's where we needed to be. And Samurai was doing so much damage and any one of us could have called it. 
to go. I mean, I'm to blame as well. I mean, I saw it and I could have just ran up with Verholst and backed him up. I, I, I even said, I was like, if I just kind of like gave him the positive affirmation, like, let's go, let's just screw these people up when they were rotating, just, you know, I, I kicked myself over it because I'm like, it's it's so clear. Like, but when you're in the moment here, you don't see it. I was like, is that really game winning spot when everyone's looking at you and like we're maintaining pressure? But if we clear our backs here, which is what we're doing, we, we clear this, then we push in and then every team from height has to push us. Oh, that's the game winning spot right there, man. That's crazy. And so I, I kick myself over it just because it's like, man, I just I, I wish that I did that differently. You know, and which across the board, you'll kind of see. And that's why when I look at all this, I'm like, this wasn't half bad. I know maybe for some, I don't know if this is going to be an entertaining video. I don't know if it's going to be a bad video. I don't know if you guys are going to love it. I don't know if you guys are going to hate it. I, some people may look at this like, this is the Borgus piece of... And then like, I'll all cry for like 16 days. And that's a very specific, but hey, you know, then you know I cry for 16 days, right? But Verholst has the right idea. And I don't fault him for occupying space. That's why I'm like, I do calm that I'm holding his cover, but I should should have went with him, man. I should have just been down there. We should just shoved. Samurai was doing such good damage. Our damage across the board was all so good. Oh, uh, we would have, we could have gotten like second, first place off this, man. Like we could have. Uh, oh, well, but you know, that's the passion, ladies and gentlemen. That's the passion. I'm going to end it there uh, just because it's pretty much where it wraps up. I'll even skip ahead and you right, let's skip ahead. See how we drop down. And so we actually are the three of us, but there's no space down there. And honestly, I thought there was more space. It just seems like there is, but there is not. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> it's like nothing here. I put the gen down to buy a little time, but it's just not enough. There's nowhere to go. I mean, the, the those bins, that was it. That was that's where we wanted to hold. Well, guys, I appreciate all of you guys for watching. If you learned anything, I hope you learned a lot. I hope it doesn't feel like I was just vert word, word vomit. I do enjoy talking throughout this. I tried to make the approach as if somebody who's never watched a tournament is watching this versus somebody who who has experience. So then it just kind of keeps building blocks there. So I try to cater to all and I did the best I could. And I have the full VOD link down in the description. Keep in mind that the rounds, there was a lot of server issues here and there. So keep that in mind too. Thank you guys again. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye, everybody.